Okay, so let's create a new repository to do some testing with. I'm going to use the Tortoise HG tool, which is available online for free and comes with a copy of Mercurial. I'm going to go to File, New Repository, and then um, I'm going to accept the path that I started up with um, and maybe call it um, my test and go ahead and create that so now we have a new working repository and I'm going to go ahead and open up a text editor and create a temp temporary file here so let's just say hello world Zoom in so you can see that. Get this out of the way. Actually, I'll say hello, DeskNet. So you can. All right, so now we have our file, and I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'll put it. Um, where my repository is. Which I've put into a temporary directory. And let's just call this hello .tn .cpp. Go ahead and save that. I'm going to zoom out here. Okay, so we've got that, and so now if I refresh Mercurial, um, you'll see that I've got this unknown item, hello destinet.dn, and it's got my code here. Um, what we want to do now is select that and add it, just like you would in CPS. So now that's added, and I'm going to commit it right through Tortoise, CVS, or Tortoise HG. Let's say added initial copy of hello desknet file. And then there's a commit button over here. And there we go. I have committed my file and it's part of the repository now. Um, you'll also notice that there's this hgignore file. Basically what that does is it allows you to disregard files in the repository that you don't care about tracking. Um, I'm just going to let that be for now. Um, so let's see. Okay, so I've got my file, but I don't really have any way to compile it. Well, let's go ahead and create a make file. And I'll zoom in again so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see. So we're going to set this to be, um, I believe I've put it into uh, make one, min, min GW use a bin there. And let's just use G, G++. And then I'm going to have all and then hello would be hello dot O and I should probably call this what I've specified. And that's it for that. And now I can put this also in the same place and call it makefile. Now, I know we don't use makefiles, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, let's see, close this again. Okay, so now if I refresh again, oh, there's my makefile. Okay, now let me go ahead and show you what this looks like with the status command. So I've got a terminal here, and I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm typing. If I type HG status, it should tell me that I've got a new file that isn't tracked. Unfortunately, you have to be in the repository that you're working with, so let me do that too. <laughs> All right. All right, so there it is. You can see I've got, again, the, the ignore file and also the make file. So let's go ahead 
and add that on the command line since you've already seen me do it through the GUI. Actually, I'm going to rename that because for some reason. Huh. Oh, apparently. <laughs> okay, my text editor decided that it needed to have dot text on the end of that. I don't want that. There we go. Alright, again, zooming in. We can see the dir here. Alright, that's better. Again, HD status. You can see again here we've got the make file. Alright, so now I'm going to add it. It's just simple. Make file. And there we go. And now when I run status again, so this is a lot like CVS. You can just see here that I've got an A next to that, <coughs> meaning that it's new to the repository. And again, um, you can use the GUI like I was showing you to commit these files, but I'm going to commit it on the command line just so that you have something to compare with. And the minus M switch is for mess adding a commit message. So I'll just say added a make file. And so this is committing to my local repository. And so now if I run status again, and you can do shortcuts. Um, it will pick the one that is unique. And if it's not unique, I believe it gives you an error. Let's try it. Yeah, ambiguous command. Okay, so I now have made two commits. So let's go back to Tortoise HG, and I'm going to refresh. So you can see here I've got added a make file. And here I still have my C file. So that's looking really good. And just for curiosity, I think. Look at that. It compiled. Excellent. I wonder if it will actually run. <laughs> Look at that. I can do something in a demonstration that works. All right. So, okay, so we've got the the revision history here, which is kind of cool. But um, I also want to point out that there's a log command. So let me zoom back in. You can see what it's got here. So if you just run HG log, it will print out all of the um, history for your repository. Right now I only have two commits. And I want to point out here that these are shortcuts where you have zero and one. Basically, these are unique to my repository only. If someone were to clone my repository, these could drift. However, what you see here, the change set, which is actually a hash, those are unique across all repository clones. So these are what you want to use when you're talking about a specific revision. Okay. So let's see. Um, the next thing I want to do is clone my repository. Say I'm working and someone wants to make uh, a copy of this and do some work while I'm working. Well, that's that's great. So um, what we can do is I've got it here, and I can right-click and clone. And you can do this on the command line too, but I'm going to skip that. And so let's call this that's going to automatically put a minus clone there. That's fine for this, but you probably want to just change the destination and leave the name alone for a real repository. So I'll click clone, and that's cloned. And now we can double click this. And you can see these are identical. We now have two complete copies of the exact same repository. And I should note that <coughs> the two repositories use what are referred to as hard links. So the data hasn't been replicated. You have a new working repository and any changes you make won't change the resident data on disk but will add information to the repository. So it's a cheap way of um, making copies of your repository without actually copying the data. So let me change the file that I've added here. I'll switch to the manifest and go ahead and look at that so that you can see that this is indeed the same. And I'll go back to my text editor. Um, I've changed that, so let's not do that. <laughs> and let's say, um, maybe I don't want to say hello to Destin anymore. I want to say hello to um, Jim. Okay. And maybe I also want to say 
Goodbye. Okay, so I've made my changes and I'm happy. So <clears throat> that's all well and good. Now if we go into here, you'll see that I've got a modification to that file. I also could have added these to my .ignore file so that we don't see these anymore, but I'll leave that for later. Um, <coughs> so we've got a modification here, and now we can run a diff to see what I've changed. Okay, so it shows that I removed hello desknet and added the two lines, hello Jim, goodbye buddy. That's great. Let's see what it looks like in the GUI. And remember, this is the main repository. My clone is still unchanged. You can see that here. There's no new history. There's no changes. Nothing to commit. So if I go to this one, however, oh, look at that. We get the difference here, and it's color-coded nicely, and you can see what's happened. So let's go ahead and commit this. So just saying what I did and going to commit it here. And great, so now we have a new revision. However, <coughs> you'll see it's no longer in this repository. It's not reflected in this repository because this is completely separate from anything I do over here. So um <coughs> if you look at the logs too, you can see this. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see what I've typed and how you have the new change set here so let me change to my clone and do the same thing and look see this is not change set 2 is not reflected in this repository as it should not be or as it should be I said I mean okay so now you're probably wondering how do we get this change into the other repository well you have to either push or pull. You would pull from the repository that has the change or push from the repository that has the change to the one that does not. I'm going to push the changes. In, in the GUI, this is nice and easy. There's this little synchronize button here and you can click on that and add a local repository. So I'm going to add uh, my test clone Um, and actually, I believe I can get the URL just from Explorer, and it's fine. Now, this works with remote repositories over SSH, HTTP, HTTPS as well, but we're just doing local right now. So I can also preview what's going out um, with the filter outgoing change sets. And it says, I have one change set. And I can click on this, and it will show me what changed. See? Down here, you've got the two changes I made and the line that I removed. So go ahead and push that. And it shows up here that the push completed. So I can go ahead and close out that error message. Now, I've still got these files down here that are unknown, but that's OK. And, and then if we go back over to the clone, we now have this new change that I've pushed from the other repository. Very easy. Now you'll notice it says this is not a head revision. That's because my working directory has not yet been updated to include this change. And in fact, if you go to the file, if I open that up in um, <coughs> my text editor, you'll see that it actually doesn't have the change yet. Let me zoom in so you can see. See? It still says hello desknet. And that's by design. Pushing and pulling changes do not modify your working directory until you want them to. And I'm sure I'm going to talk more about that during the presentation. So there's a couple commands I want to run before I close out this little demonstration. <coughs> so I'm in my clone here. And I need to be careful with the magnifier, apparently. So you'll see that there isn't any change here that I've made. And so you basically have to remember when you 
pull or push changes that you need to eventually merge those changes. Now you'll know whether or not you need to do this because of other commands. There's, you can look at the head, and so this repository should have two heads. Or I'm sorry, <coughs> um, the tip is the is the CVS equivalent, or I'm sorry, the mercurial equivalent of the CVS head. So if you look at the tip, it is actually in my repository, but I haven't. I haven't updated yet, so let's let's go ahead and do that, and I'll I'll do that in the GUI, um, just so that it's a little easier. I can right-click my working directory and go uh, update, and I can specify the revision. Now you can go forward and backward in history, but let's just move forward, and now you can see the graph changed, so I now have linear history, and my changes are now reflected. If I go back to my text editor, oh, it's changed. And there it is. Looks good. <coughs> uh, I think I'm going to skip over um, the parents and the head commands, actually. Um, and just show you now that if I do a log, whoops, I'll zoom in so you can see that. I now have the change that I made in the other repository. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of an introduction to how you actually go about using these things. And um, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, thanks.